Hi everybody, it's Kevin here, and I'm here with John from Four Lights to so that he can show us Defenders of Time, which has already been on our E3 stage show, but the game's come a long way since then, is is what I hear anyway. John, is that what what have you been up to between then and now? We've been busy on the polish of the game. There's there's a lot to uh, that goes in making to making a game to get it past the alpha stage that we were in. We've put in more maps. We've made matchmaking a real thing. We've put in uh, friends lists, we've put in ranking systems, we've put in a news page. We've done a lot with the game. So the first thing that we're doing here is we are looking at the lines that we've got that are coming from each of the source areas. So you can see that there are a couple of source areas up here, there's another one down here. And uh, we've got developers over in, uh, in Vegas who are playing with us, so they, they know what, what I'm about to do. But uh, you can see on the ground down here, there are actually lines, and these lines will change. So I can turn them on and off, and they'll change dynamically with uh, where the uh, creeps are allowed to go. So if I start to build something here, it'll actually change that. And if I block it off entirely, they'll go around. So there's some, some maze work here that you're doing to force them into longer paths, for example. Yes. That's one way you could do this. One day our, our main engineer comes in and it's a Monday morning and he goes, I just got frustrated. I, I was just really frustrated with the camera because the main Unity camera pivots around a central point. And he had spent all weekend, <laughs> he comes in on Monday and he gave us this wonderful camera that'll really do anything that we want it to do. It'll zoom out far. Um, we can get really in close to see the towers and the action happening. And uh, it was really a surprise. And we're very proud of it because it's such a nice feature. So I've activated the air pads here because they've got air guys coming. Uh, it just turns on the markers for them uh, so they don't get in the way when I don't need them. Uh, hey, uh, guys, don't, don't delete those. <laughs> Uh, so we also have voice chat in this. When I hold down E, I can actually talk to them and tell them um, what I need them to do, and they can tell me what they need me to do in addition to our other drawing tools and our pinging ability. So when I when I hit ping, you can actually see the little uh, arrow there. Right. Oh, totally. And you you did a little what looked like a little telestration there a second ago. What was that all about? Oh yeah. Um, when you hit when you hold down shift in this game, you can draw. And it's, it's so that we can say, hey, look, I need you to build this complex maze shape over here, and I need you to do this. This game is really a multiplayer game. It's not about the story that we were trying to tell. It's about the battle that we're having. Hey, Kurt, spend your money. So we've got 100% sell. It's better to spend your money in this game than to hang on with it. If you make a mistake, like I go, oh, this tower's wrong, I can sell it. But then I go, oh, yeah, no, actually, that was right, because they're sending off massed units at us. And I can build it right back up. Uh, the enemy's got a commander, and the commander is actually on the same map as we are. He's actually looking at our map right now, and he's going, how can I hurt them? He's saying, okay, they've got green here. And... I see a lot of brown, which is kind of neutral, and I see a little bit of stealth detection over here, and I see a little bit of anti-armor. So what are they weak against? So obviously he's decided that, well, we're really strong against ground. So he's sending air, <laughs> of course. So right now I'm going to go and go ahead and delete all this uh, anti-ground stuff and improve our anti-air zone. So another one of the really fun features that we're, we're, we're proud of is uh, called Rapid Cell. If I hold down R... Boom, there they all go. Uh, yeah, they just disappear. Um, and if it's an upgraded tower, it will only sell to basic. So it doesn't destroy my maze. When you play this game, you're playing on a team. You're playing on a team as a team, and I know that sounds really obvious, but in a, in a lot of games we've played, you're, you're playing alone on a team. You're, you're fighting a war alone. You just happen to have people who are fighting the same war on the same side as you. In this game, if you lose, your whole team loses. And if you win, your whole team wins. There's no MVP. So money is shared 
uh, across everybody evenly. It's distributed evenly. It's uh, in this case. So you can see up here, I robot. He doesn't have any money, and uh, he doesn't have any way for me to give him money. But that's because he's a commander. He's spending his time analyzing the situation. Um, these other guys, though. They have the ability to sell the towers that I've placed. They can upgrade the towers that I've built. It's all in service of the team instead of uh, oneself. Um, if we lose, all of our uh, scores will take a hit in the ranking system. Now, if I've lost, if I've personally lost a bunch of games in a row, my score will take more of a hit than theirs will. The other thing is we don't have any fog of war. We want to players to be able to take a look at what the other teams are doing and how the other teams are doing it uh, and we wanted the commanders to be able to see what was going on so if you hold, press tab it'll go it'll fast move to the other team so right now they've built up a really strong cluster over here but as you guys can probably see these little airlines they got going they don't really pass through that zone and they've got some green here, which really isn't going to do much against air. Probably our best air zone on this map is right here. They've got one really strong tower right there. But otherwise, they're kind of weak. Uh, I don't see much, uh, much white in here, if any white. No, I don't see any white at all, which is probably why our commander is sending uh, stealth. So the only thing that can hurt their stealth right now is are these green towers, which indiscriminately hurt things. But uh, so our our commander is doing the same thing right now. He's analyzing the other team and attacking. So tell me more about what the commander is is up to during this time, because we're seeing it from your perspective. But what is the what is the role of a commander? I when I think of something that has like a commander and grunts and multiplayer, for example, I think of things like natural selection and and savage and things like that. What is, how, do the, how does that role work here? So the commander affects things um, in an oblique way. So he can research uh, better offensive enemies or he can research better defensive towers or he can, he can actually go and take this, you see this blue tower over here. Um, he can say, oh, well, I wanna get to the top level blue tower. I wanna be able to just freeze everything in place all the time. And he can pretty much skip every other upgrade if he wants to. Now, his teammates would probably kill him for that, but he could if he wanted to. So that's kind of interesting to me, actually, because to me that, that, that says, hey, we've taken, we've made somebody else take care of the really micromanagey things, like exactly what upgrade path you're gonna take, or clicking on every single tower to upgrade every single tower at, you know, individually and things like that. You've basically given that off to one person to do those things. That's only true when four players are playing. When less than four players are playing, uh, player number one is both a builder and a commander, which okay. can get overwhelming at times if you're not a really good player. We generally try to select the best player on a team to be a commander because they really know what they're, they're, they're about. We're all set to go for November 4th. Uh, the That's game's awesome. going to be $20. If you buy the game, and your friend, Tim, doesn't own the game. You can actually say, hey, Tim, download the game, make an account, make a free account, and then once Tim's in the game, he can play single player for free, and I can actually invite Tim and say, hey, Tim, you come uh, join my game. Now, now he can actually play the full game as long as we're playing together. Only one player online can do that. If it's just one online player, um, you can invite them. If you have a second friend, one person's going to need to buy a copy. But if it's on a LAN, like you say you're having a birthday party or a pizza party or uh, you're at the office, mm -hmm. only one person needs to own the game for a full four-on-four, four, eight-person match. And after that, what are your post-release plans for Defenders of Time? In three or four months, we're going to release an expansion pack, and the expansion pack will be $5. And then we're going to do it again. And when that second expansion pack comes out, It'll also be $5, but the first expansion pack will be free so that anybody who gets into our game is always either current or one expansion pack behind. John, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll have you back soon, I have no doubt. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks for listening, guys.